Hello, it's Dennis here. So this is going to be a series of videos on probability theory. Um, I'm going to be creating this over the next few days. So probably every after two days, I'll be releasing a new video on this. So this is going to be the first video. And um, for this video, I want to talk about kind of the basics of probability, like what is probability and some of the common terms. And I'll also go ahead to talk about the uh, some of the most important axioms at least at the basic level, and then we'll be looking at more complex things uh, along the course. So let's begin with what probability is at the, at the most fundamental level. Well, probability can be defined as the measure of chance. I mean, um, we live in a world where things happen randomly, and um, some things are more likely to happen than others, and, and that measure of likelihood uh, the measure of likelihood of something to occur, and that something is called an event. We'll look at that in a moment. But the, the, the measure of likelihood of an event to occur is what we call probability or chance, um, as it is commonly used by, you know, in, in non-mathematical applications. So probability theory or the study of probability is very important because many things are random and um, we cannot be sure whether something is going to occur or not, but we can at least tell how likely it is to occur using uh, probabilities. Uh, so, as you may have already predicted, probabilities can be measured in percentages. So, we can say, for example, there is a 90% chance of, you know, getting rain uh, on a certain day of the week or in a certain season. Um, so we can use percentages, we can also use decimals, uh, and if we can use decimals, that means we can use fractions as well. So, yeah, that's the kind of, uh, the basic idea of probability and um, the units in which probability is measured. It's the, the, the measure of uh, how likely an event is to occur, which takes me kind of to the next thing um, of of some of the common terms we'll be using here in probability. So the first, the first thing we'll be using is an event. And, and that's something I've been talking about already. So let, let me show you what an event is here. Um, so let me just pick this color here. So I'll kind of put this down. So we've said probability is kind of the measure of the likelihood likelihood of an event the measure of likelihood of an event to occur or to take place so that's called probability or chance if you want uh, and then we want to look at some of the common terms we'll be using here and the first term is event okay so Every time we talk about an event in probability, and we'll be talking about events more commonly because everything we do in probability is an event. So an event is kind of the, a set. So you just say an event is, is, uh, is a set of possible outcomes. So it could be, let me just do this. Um, so an event, it can be, uh, is, is an outcome. An event can be an outcome or a defined. I'm going to give you examples of, of this event. So an event is an outcome or a defined set of outcomes. So, uh, yeah, an event is an outcome or a defined set of outcomes of a random experiment. Um, a random experiment. By random, we mean um, this experiment here is totally relying on, on chance. Um, it's not something that is hard-coded, but rather something that is based on chance. So it's a random experiment. And the outcome is called an event. So I'll give you an example of, of an event. Let's say, let's say we have a coin. Uh, so I have a coin here. Let's say we have a coin and we toss this coin in air. Uh, I'm, I'm very bad at tossing this. But if we toss this coin in air, we can either get 
uh, a tail. So we can either get a tail or we can get a head. And there are only two possibilities here, either a head or a tail. So let's say we get a tail, that's an event. If we get a tail, that's an event. If we get a head, that's another event. Um, another event could be, let's say we roll a dice. So, you know, a dice is this six-sided, uh, uh, or it's a cube uh, with, you know, dots on it. And um, so the way this works is that you put a dice in something where you can just shake it and then roll it out. So uh, the probability that, or, or anyway, if you roll this out, you, you could get a one, a two, a three, a four, or a face with five or six dots on it. Now, whichever of those you get is, is an event. You could be, your event could be getting a one, your event could be getting a two, um, your event could be getting an even number. So let me just put this down here. Uh, an example of an event is getting, getting even numbers. So getting even numbers when a dice is rolled. So yeah, we can define this to be our event, and in that case, if E is our event, then um, you could have a 2, you could have a 4, or you could have a 6. So in this case, we have a defined set of outcomes forming our event. So our event is getting an even number when you roll this, this dice here. Uh, okay. So let's go ahead and talk about more important terms. Uh, again, some of these will become clear as we continue to use them, especially in the uh, next videos or sections of this course. Um, okay, so the next term I want us to look at is the sample space. Uh, the sample space. I should have actually talked about this first. So let me just create this space here, okay. So we have the sample space. Um, so the sample space is very, very important here because um, a sample space is the set. So it's the set of all possible outcomes. It's a set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment. So a set of all possible outcomes of a random, oops, a random experiment. Or you could say um, a set of all events, so to say. So a sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. I'll give you an example of, of a sample space. Um, if we roll a dice, so if we, if we roll, so let's take an example of a random experiment to be rolling a dice. Then the sample space, by the way, we commonly use letter S for this. So the sample space for rolling a dice would be one. You could get a one, you could get a two, a three, a four, you could get a five, or you could get a six. So there is no outcome you can get after rolling a dice that is outside this set here. So this set that contains all the possible outcomes of rolling a dice is what we call the sample space. Um, Another example could be tossing a coin, tossing a coin, oops. So the sample space in that case would be a head and a tail because if you roll a dice, uh, sorry, if you toss a coin, you can only get a head or a tail if, if that's what you're interested in. So yeah, this is what sample space basically is. If you if you are if you are interested in let's say um, if, if your random experiment is choosing a day out of a week then your sample space would be Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday uh, Saturday and Sunday so that would be your sample space a set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment okay now uh, let's talk about some some important axioms here or properties of an event, because uh, this will be also important. So let me change the color here. Um, so 
talk about some important axioms. So I'm going to let E be an event and also S to be the sample space. Okay, so let's say E is, is an event and S <clears throat> is the sample space. Well, by definition, probability, uh, let's say probability of an event is defined as the number of outcomes <clears throat> of this event divided by the, the number of elements in the sample space. So this right here is the definition of probability. You get the number of uh, outcomes of the experiment divided by the total possible outcomes. That's what we have here as the number of outcomes in the event that we were we are considering and then divided by the sample space which contains all the total uh, outcomes. And by the way, the, the number of events is always less than or equal to the sample space and that makes sense because um, you, you cannot have the event to be bigger than the sample space because the sample space contains all the possibilities. So this makes sense, which leads us to our next property. Uh, okay, I can't scroll down anymore, so I'm just going to put that here. And our next property comes right from this. Uh, okay, let me call this number two. Now, since the, uh, the number of outcomes cannot exceed the sample space, that means the probability of an event, um, the probability of an event cannot exceed the, cannot exceed one, sorry, okay. So the probability of an event cannot go beyond one because, I mean, that's how fractions work. If I have uh, a numerator that is smaller than or equal to the denominator, then uh, the value of my fraction can never be bigger than one. So this right here is important. In fact, to make this even uh, uh, more general, uh, I should do this because probability also cannot be negative because first of all, sample space or the number of elements in the sample space is always a positive value and this is also a positive value. The number of uh, outcomes. So always we will have probability of an event as a positive value. So uh, of course it could be zero because uh, uh, let's say we are dealing with, uh, if, if I give you an event like the probability that a man gives birth, well that's naturally impossible. So the probability that a man will give birth, uh, like literally giving birth, is, is zero. So probability can be zero. Uh, which means there is absolutely no chance that this event will occur or the probability could be one, which means that this is a sure event. It will occur under uh, uh, any conditions, um, but most likely probabilities are always in between zero and one. And this forms our third property, very, very important um, that we'll be using. Okay, so I think that's it for this video. We've looked at what probability is and some of the common terms we use, which is events and sample space. And we've also looked at some of the axioms or properties of probabilities, uh, sorry, of yes, probabilities and events. In the next video, we'll talk about events in great detail. We'll look at the different types of events. So see you in the next video. Bye.